This lecture is part of an online course on Lie groups and will be about the Bianchi classification. So the Bianchi classification is a classification of Lie groups or algebras of dimension at most three. I think Bianchi did the three-dimensional case. So you recall the idea for classifying Lie groups is as follows. First of all, we classify um, the Lie algebras. Then we find the centre of these Lie algebras. And the Lie groups is just the simply connected group divided by um, something in the centre, some discrete subgroup of the centre. So um, once we've found the Lie algebras, the groups are fairly easy to find. So the main problem is finding the Lie algebras. Um, and we're going to do, well, obviously you can't do the disconnected ones, so I should really have said this was the connected Lie groups. Um, so let's just do the cases of dimension less than 3. Um, these are quite easy. So dimension naught is trivial. There's only one connected group and one dimension, one Lie algebra. Dimension 1, um, the Lie algebra, well, there's only one possible Lie algebra, which is just a one-dimensional vector space with bracket 0. The simply connected group is the real numbers under addition, and um, discrete subgroup of it is either trivial or isomorphic to z, so the only other possibilities we get are modulo z, which is the circle group S1. In dimension 2, um, the Lie algebra is spanned by two elements A and B, and the only non-trivial bracket is that the bracket of A and B must be equal to something. And we may as well choose a basis so the something is equal to B. I mean, if it isn't, we just choose a different basis. So we may as well take A, B equal to B, or the other possibility is, of course, that it might be zero, in which case we can't take it as part of the basis. So there are exactly two possibilities. The Lie algebra can either be R squared with the trivial bracket, or it can be the Lie algebra of this one, which you remember is the Lie algebra of the AX plus B group. And you can think of this Lie algebra as consisting of all matrices A, B, naught, 0, 0. And the corresponding groups, well, here there are three essentially different groups because we can take R squared modulo 0, which is just R squared, or R squared modulo a discrete group isomorphic to Z, or R squared modulo Z squared. And... For this one, um, the, 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 the corresponding group is the matrices A, B, um, naught, 1, with A greater than 0, and this group has no center, so there are exactly four Lie groups of dimension 2, optoisomorphism, connected ones. Um, so now we'll do dimension 3. Um, I should mention that these are closely related to um, the the Thurston geometrization um, conjecture, which was proved by Perelman, um, which says that every three-dimensional, or well, every compact three-dimensional manifold can be chopped up into pieces, and each of these pieces is one of eight geometries. And these eight geometries are quite closely related to several of the three-dimensional Lie groups. In fact, seven of the geometries can be represented as left invariant metrics on these groups, and there's one geometry left over which doesn't quite fit in. So it's not an exact correspondence, unfortunately. So let's see how to classify the... Um, um, three-dimensional Lie algebras. So let's take a Lie algebra L of dimension 3 over the reals. Um, then um, we can ask, um, does it have, does L have a two-dimensional normal sub-algebra? 
Well, what is a normal subalgebra? So let's call this normal subalgebra M. Well, we say M is a normal subalgebra in L if um, M L is contained in M whenever M is in M and L is in sorry L is in L. Um, this is very close related to the concept of a normal subgroup. Um, so um, for the simply connected groups, a, a subalgebra would be normal if and only if the corresponding subgroup was normal in, in, in L. So, so this corresponds to the notion of a, a normal subgroup. Um, and first we'll assume that L does have a two-dimensional normal subalgebra. Um, in this case, the two-dimensional subalgebra M must be one of the two-dimensional algebras we classified. So it's either equal to R squared or it's equal to the AB um, um, algebra. And this means that L has an extra element X. So L is generated by, say, X and M. And um, M goes to the bracket of X and M is a linear transformation of the, the space M. Um, now, in the case when M is equal to the AB naught naught group, you, it's not too difficult to check that this linear transformation must be of the form um, M goes to X um, M prime, sorry, um, M goes to M prime M for some M prime in M. And by subtracting M prime from X, we can assume X equals zero, in which case the Lie algebra is just the product of this two dimensional algebra M by one dimensional algebra. So that's not terribly interesting, or, well, it's mildly interesting, but th there's not much to do. So we're, 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 we can assume that M is just R squared with bracket zero. And we can take X to be any linear transformation. So let's look at what the possibilities. for the linear transformation of M R. And we can write this, th these out quickly. First of all, we can have the eigenvalues might be the same, and they might be the same and zero. And if they're the same and zero, there are two possibilities, optoisomorphism, we can take the zero matrix, or we can take a sort of little nilpotent matrix. Um, or they might be non-zero, so the eigenvalues might both be one. And, um, well, um, the linear transformation of M, well, we can re rescale X, so you can multiply the linear transformation by non-zero constants. You may as well assume the eigenvalues are one. And this again leads to two possibilities. We could have the identity matrix, or we could have a, a sort of identity matrix with a, with a one up there, as in Jordan normal form. Um, alternatively, the eigenvalues could be different. And in this case, the matrix has to be diagonalizable. And in this case, we could have one eigenvalue could be zero. In this case, we can assume the matrix looks like this by rescaling it or something. Or the um, eigenvalues could both be real and both non-zero. And in this case, by rescaling, we can assume that it looks like 1a. Um, there's, there's actually a sort of special case when a is minus 1, which is a little bit special. Or finally, they could be complex, in which case the matrix looks like a plus um, bi or a minus bi if you diagonalize it. Of course, um, a real matrix doesn't look like this. What I mean is if uh, if you think of it as a complex matrix, you could turn it into this form. And again, A equals naught is, is, a, is a particularly special case of this. So we can essentially write down all the Lie algebras with a two-dimensional normal subgroup just by going through this list and working out what the corresponding Lie algebra. 
is. And um, let me go through these. So first of all, um, we can have the matrix is just zero. This is called type one in the Bianchi classification. The, 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 the Bianchi classification are divided up into types um, for some reason. So here the, the Lie algebra is it's got a two-dimensional abelian Lie algebra with something else acting trivial on it. So it's so it's just the abelian Lie algebra R3. And just as before, we know what the corresponding groups are. The groups are R3 modulo 0, Z, Z squared, or Z cubed. So we just get four different groups corresponding to that. Then we get the matrix 0, 1, 0, 0. And this is called the Bianchi group of type 2. And the corresponding Lie algebra is the Heisenberg algebra, which we will be discussing a fair amount later. And you can think of this as being all matrices that look like this. Um, and the corresponding group, well, the simply connected group consists of all matrices like this. And it's got a center which consists of essentially the things where this is non-zero and those two are zero. So the center is just a one-dimensional Lie algebra. Um, and there's um, optoisomorphism. There's only one way to find a non-trivial discrete subgroup of the center. So we can take this group or we can take this group um, and mod it out by the matrices of the form um, like that, where, 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 we, where, where we take some element of the integers. So, so there, are, there are two groups here. Um, these two correspond to certain um, Thurston geometries. This one corresponds to the Euclidean geometry. And this one corresponds to something called a nil geometry. So a typical compact three manifold with nil geometry, would you take the Heisenberg group with um, um, with all real coefficients and quotient it out by the subgroup where these three entries have to be integers. Um, so next we come on to the matrix 0, 1, 0, 0, which is the type 3 in the Bianchi classification. And this is just the group we mentioned earlier. It's just the product of the, the, the reals times the um, A, B, Naught one group, or we could do. I mean, the, the Lie algebra is almost the same, except you put a zero there. And here there are just two interesting groups because you could replace this R by S one. Um, this corresponds to the um, in the Thurston geometry. It corresponds to um, three manifolds, sort of modelled on the hyperbolic plane times the reals. Um, then there's um, if you look at the matrix 0, 1, 0, 0, this is the type 4 Thurston jump, sorry, the type 4 Bianchi um, group, and it doesn't really correspond to any Thurston geometry. And frankly, I can't really think of anything very interesting to say about this group. Um, if you look at the matrix um, 1, 0, 0, 1, this is um, the type 5. Um, Bianchi group and um, in, the, the, for, in for for Thurston's geometries it corresponds to the hyperbolic geometry um, H three. In other words, um, you can put a left invariant metric on this group, which turns out to make it into a, 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 a hyperbolic space. Um, um, if we look at the matrices um, of the form A100 with A not equal to 1, these, are the, the, these give you the type 6 Bianchi groups. We notice there's an infinite family of such groups because you can take A to be anything bigger than 1, for example, and th th that gives you an infinite number of non-isomorphic groups. Um, the special case um, when a is minus 1 is particularly important. This is sometimes called type um, 6 sub 0. It's, it's a bit of an accident that um, how these things were divided up into types. I mean, the, the, this should really have been um, broken off as a separate type. Um, um, 
it, it, it's actually corresponds to the two-dimensional Poincaré group. In other words, the um, group of isometries of um, a two-dimensional copy of Lorentzian space, um, or at least its connected component. In, in Thurston's classification of geometries, this corresponds to the so-called sol geometry. Sol stands for solvable, that um, this is a sort of solvable group, I guess, or maybe whatever. Um, and then finally, we get to um, the matrices of the form A plus BI, A minus BI when you diagonalize them. These are called type 7. Um, there's a special case type 7 sub 0. Again, it was accidentally not it was accidentally put in with this case when it's really something special. This is where you take a equals zero and it corresponds to this um, matrix here. Well, well, this is obviously the um, diagonalization of a rotation. Um, and the, the, so these sort of correspond to the rotations cos theta, sine theta, minus sine theta, cosine theta. And in fact, this three dimensional group is just corresponds to isometries of a Euclidean plane. Um, and the, 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 the isometries of Euclidean plane is not actually simply connected. It's, it's got an infinite fundamental group. So you can take an infinite cover of that and get quite a lot of different groups by taking quotients by something in the center. Um, so again, that there, there are infinite families of of these groups. Um, um, well, that more or less uh, gives a quick summary of the three-dimensional groups that have a normal subgroup of dimension two. Uh, now, now we get onto the groups which have no three-dimensional, no two-dimensional normal subgroup. Um, these groups um, actually turn out to be simple Lie algebras. So a simple Lie algebra means there's no normal subalgebra other than naught and the whole Lie algebra. So this is the analog of simple groups, which are groups which have no normal subgroup other than the obvious subgroups. Um, well, um, we'll be probably be discussing the classification of simple Lie algebras in general later. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quote things from the classification. First of all, there's exactly one three-dimensional Lie algebra over the complex numbers that is simple. And it's just um, the Lie algebra SL2C, which is two by two matrices A, B, C, D with A plus D equals zero. And there are two three-dimensional Lie algebras over the reals that are simple that become this one if you um, tensor them with the complex numbers. And these are the Lie algebras of SL2 of R, which are just like that. And there's also the Lie algebra of SU2 of R, which is the Lie algebra of the special unitary group. Um, so um, corresponding groups would be the Lie algebras SL2 of R and the group SU2 of R, which is isomorphic to the group S3 that we discussed earlier. And this one is simply connected. And it has a center of order two. So we get exactly two um, real Lie groups, which are this group here or this group here, quotient out by the element of order two. So we can quotient out by 2z. And this turns out to be the special orthogonal group in three dimensions of, of ro three dimensional rotations. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this group is not simply connected. It has a center that's um, um, isomorphic to the integers, so we can take its universal 
cover, which is sometimes known by SL2 with a twiddle over it. And this is center isomorphic to the integers. So we can quotient out by any subgroup of the integers and get a get a infinite discrete family of, of groups with this Lie algebra. Um, so um, these um, um, class correspond to Thurston to the Bianchi. These are the Bianchi groups of type um, eight and nine, and they correspond to two Thurston geometries. This is called the Thurston geometry of the universal cover of SL2R because no one could think of a better name for it. And this is called um, spherical geometry. Um, um, this is particularly notorious because one obvious example of a manifold with a spherical geometry is the manifold S3. And the Poincaré conjecture asks whether this is the only simply connected um, compact three manifold. And this was finally answered by Perelman after about a, a century of attempts at it. Um, so that um, gives the, more or less gives the classification of three dimensional connected Lie groups. Um, um, I should finish off by saying there's one other Thurston geometry. There's an extra Thurston geometry of, um, based on S2 times R, which very annoyingly doesn't correspond to any three-dimensional Lie group. So um, th there's a lot of overlap between Thurston geometries and Bianchi groups, but the, 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 there's, it, the, they, the, they're not quite the same as each other. Um, I'll just say briefly what happens in dimension greater than or equal to four. Um, um, what happens is the simple Lie algebras and groups can be classified. There are only a finite number in each dimension. These were classified by killing over the complex numbers and by Cartan over the reals. And I plan to discuss this classification in some later lectures. Um, the solvable ones just turn out to be a horrible mess. So if we look at the classification of solvable ones in three dimensions, um, what you see is that we get um, six or possibly seven or eight different types. And they're beginning to look like a bit of a mess because there are rather a lot of two by two matrices. Um, as the size of the Lie algebra goes up, the complexity just goes completely wild and you can sort of push the classification to dimension four or five. I, I'm not quite sure how far people have got, but um, beyond about six, it just gets hopelessly complicated to do. Um, a general Lie algebra over the reals, I'm talking about finite dimensional Lie algebras, it turns out to have a normal subgroup that's solvable and if you quotient out by this normal solvable subgroup, you get a product of simple Lie algebras. So the product of simple Lie algebras that sits on top is sort of classified by Killing and Cartan, and the solvable normal subalgebra is, as I said, the, 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 these are just horrifically complicated in high dimensions. A typical example of this might be the set of all the Lie algebra of all matrices that look like this. Um, so what we do is we just take all five by five matrices and we, we, we set this block equal to zero. And then the solvable, normal solvable subalgebra sort of consists of this block of six entries together with diagonal, um, the, the diagonal matrices here with equal eigenvalues and the diagonal matrices here with equal eigenvalues. And the product of simple Lie algebras, we have a SL2 here of the trace zero matrices here and an SL3 of the trace zero matrices here. So this is in some sense a moderately typical example of a Lie algebra in high dimensions. It's got a solvable thing with a product of simple things sitting on top of it. Okay, that'll be enough about three-dimensional Lie algebras for the moment. <laughs>